Yes, the Florida Gators need to beat the Florida State Seminoles, but Billy Napier also needs to run the score up on Mike Norvell. You are Locked On Gators, your daily podcast on the Florida Gators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Gators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Gators your first listen of the day. Every day we are available daily and free for the podcast. Happy Friday. I am Brandon Olson. Find me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find all my written work with New York Giants on SI.com. You can get started with a big return on FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets. If you win that $5 bet, visit FanDuel.com to get started. And like I said, we are your team every day. We had three on Monday, three on Tuesday, Two on Wednesday, one on Thanksgiving, one today, one tomorrow. Busy week with Locked On Gators. Uh, but the Florida Gators play the Florida State Seminoles, who, yeah, two and nine. And, and this game is a game that I've, for a while now, said, hey, Billy, if you want to get me back, you got to beat LSU, Ole Miss, Florida State, have a respectable recruiting class. And... The reason that I've harped on you still need to beat Florida State is that this is exactly the kind of game that throughout his career, Billy Napier has gotten conservative. If he's actually turned a corner, then maybe things get different. But this is the kind of game, the Arkansas in in 2023, that kind of game where it's like, you shouldn't lose Vanderbilt in 2022. You shouldn't lose this game, but you do. Uh, and that's why I'm like, I'm keeping Florida State on that. You need to beat them if you want to get me back. I'm, I'm not accepting, oh, but you beat the top 10 team. Um, this is a team that Billy Napier has never beaten. This is a school and fan base, as in Florida State, that deserves anything that comes their way. This is a school and fan base that deserves anything they're going to get. This 2-9 and nine season, hopefully 2-10, and ten, that's what they deserve, okay? Like, especially for all the, all the crazy talk about, um, you guys are going to regret leaving us out of the college football playoff. We're going to put the world on notice. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. You were 13-0, and 0, and they don't like to acknowledge that they lost by 60 points in the next game. Uh, unconquered because they don't like to acknowledge that they lost by 60 points. This is a fan base that deserves an ass whooping. Simple as that. Whether they're eating dog poop, pretending to eat dog poop, whether they're doing whatever stupid thing they want to do because they can't actually talk football like another team in the ACC in the state of Florida because this team just doesn't know. They just They just have no idea what they're talking about. This fan base has no idea what they're talking about, but they got really big for their bridges when they had a good season last year. And when they beat Charleston Southern, all of a sudden they went, Hey, Florida, you're next. Okay. Okay. Pipsqueak. Um, but this is the game where, where Billy Napier, I think it needs to run it up. Why wouldn't he, you don't get this opportunity often. Right. And look, uh, of course I agree that, when these teams are good, this matchup has so much more riding on it. It's way more entertaining. There's a lot more to it. However, when they're bad, bury them. And it, it's as simple as that. Mike Norvell is not going anywhere, right? He's got like a $60 million buyout or something like that. Mike Norvell ain't going anywhere. Do you know the irreparable damage that you can do to his reputation with recruits in the state of Florida. They're not going to forget it. Like, think about it this way. If you're Florida, you're Billy Napier, you've already taken multiple recruits from that recruiting class, right? You've already taken multiple recruits from Mike Norvell this year. You've taken Daniel Pierre Lewis. You've taken Byron Lewis. You've taken Tramel Jones. There's one more kid that I think you need to take from that Florida State recruiting class, and it's Solomon Thomas. 
by the way, Solomon Thomas is supposed to be taking a visit to Florida State for this game. Which means that Solomon Thomas would be in person watching this game. Beat the crap out of them. Take Solomon Thomas from them. And for the next year, like you're going to have to deal with this on the flip side, right? Every every Miami coach, they're, they're going to go on, on the trail. And if it's Miami or Florida... Miami coaches are going to go out there and go, hey, well, we beat the crap out of Florida in 2023 or 2024. Like, we beat the crap out of them, right? So if you're part of the 2026 class, why would you want to go to the place we beat the crap out of them? Like, that's what you're going to have to hear. That's going to be the negative recruiting. However, you beat the crap out of Florida State, and next for the next year, you get to go and tell everybody, hey, we beat the ever-loving crap out of Mike Norvell in Florida State. And we took any kid we wanted from him. That's a great recruiting pitch if you're talking about an in-state kid especially. Yeah, you just, I mean, Miami you have to deal with separately. But Florida State, you get to go, hey, we kicked the crap out of them. Why would you want to go there? A year after they had their best year in, in God knows how long. A year after they had one of their best teams in a very long time, a decade plus was Jimbo and, and Jameis. Long time ago. So a year after they have their best team since then, you win and dominate them after they crap the bed the entire season. That's fun. That's fun. Like that's a that's a great selling point. Billy Napier needs to run the score up. Also, you need as much positive recruiting momentum as possible, or as much positive momentum as possible dominating the last team on your schedule before signing day, which by the way, next week, dominating a team before that, after you beat a top 10 team and beat a top 25 team, that's a lot of, like you should be able to pick up some significant momentum with recruits if that's the kind of business you're doing. But if you scrape by Florida State, you lose that. Like You, you need to beat them handedly. I'm not usually the kind of go, oh, like they, they cover the spread. They didn't cover the spread. The spread in this game is like 14 and a half. You need to cover that. And I don't want to hear anything about how Florida State's players are playing hard. They've been playing hard all year. They've been getting whooped all year. I don't care if they play hard. They're playing hard and losing. Womp womp. Simple as that. They're playing hard and losing. And as we know, we don't care for that here. We'll talk about how Florida can run the score up over Florida State when we get back with Locked On Gators. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets to see your favorite teams play live even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats, so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. If you're in or near Tallahassee and you want to go see the Florida Gators hopefully beat down the Florida State Seminoles, you could do that with game time. Last minute tickets, great time, great pricing with game time. If you want to go to the Florida Gators bowl game, wherever that may be, you could do that with game time. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time picks. Download the game time app, create an account. You could locked on college for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account where you could locked on college for $20 off. Download game time today. What time is it? It's game time, baby. And if you like representing the Florida Gators, if you like repping the logo of the Florida Gators and you like comfortable shirts or sweatpants, go to homefieldapparel.com, right? They've got everything. They've got football boxes that contain three never-before-seen items for your school that are not available anywhere else, curated so fans have new gear to wear all season long. You know, football season is, like, it starts August Hot as hell. It ends late November. If you if you're like me, that's 30 degrees where I live. Like it's it's really cold up here. Okay. So we're we're taken care of year round by home field apparel. Then they are the most comfortable shirts. I've gotten DMs from people that are like, you know what, you're right. These shirts are incredibly comfortable. You can find out too. Go to homefieldapparel.com and use code Gator24 to save 15% with homefieldapparel.com. 
Thanks for making Locked On Gators your first listen of the day every day. We are available daily and free in the podcast and on YouTube. And when we talk about the Florida Gators putting putting on Florida State Seminoles, like I've mentioned before, this is exactly the kind of game where throughout his career, Billy Napier has gotten conservative. He just goes, hey, we're just going to run the ball. Inside zone, take what we can get, move the sticks, and, and, and just limit this game and just, just dial it back. I don't think you could do that this week. This isn't Charlotte last year. This isn't Arkansas last year where you could just go, hey, yeah, we're going to be a little bit more conservative with things. No, go out there. Like Florida State has been horrible limiting explosive plays, okay? Some of you may know where I'm going with this. Chicks dig the long ball. Throw the ball deep. You have the guy who is, I, I understand that there's always people when I say this, that the sample size, I get it. You have a guy that is the best deep passer in the country statistically. I understand with a small sample size. If you take anybody else with his sample size or larger, he's still the best deep passer in the country. He's really good at it, okay? Uh, and so you have DJ Lightway who can do that. You have, I know that on, on Wednesday's show, Hayden was like, oh yeah, like Florida State still has a good defensive front. We have, I know, I know he's got to talk, you know, at least somewhat nice. Uh, don't get gotcha. I get it. But they haven't been playing like a good defensive front, okay? You should have time back there if you decide to, hey, we're going to air this thing out. You should have time to do that. And again, you've got DJ Lagway with a Florida State defense that, in fact, let me let me pull up the paper or pull up the game on paper stats because, my goodness, um, they stink. Uh, they are horrible there with with giving up explosive passing plays. And I worded it that way because on Tuesday when we did our early crossover, uh, Brian Smith the Locked On Seminoles host, made it the point to talk about how Florida's secondary is horrible, gives up so many explosive plays. Florida's allowed 10% of passing plays are explosive passing plays. Florida State, 10.1%. Eat it. Um, so that's, that's where we have, but this is a bad Florida State team, and and their havoc rate, like their, their terms of um, pressures, sacks, tackles for a loss, Theirs is horrible. Florida's is at least good there. Florida State does not generate pressure consistently. Florida State does not get to the quarterback at all. Charleston Southern had more sacks in the first half than them last week, and I believe for the entire game. And their secondary constantly has busted coverages or, or constantly has lost battles in coverage because they play a lot of man coverage. You're going to lose those battles, and when you lose battles in man coverage, they tend to be pretty rough, right? So I think that when you're Florida, you got to go, okay, well, we've got DJ Lagway who can move if pressure does start coming in or if coverage backs off completely if they're playing man and they're, they're gone. DJ Lagway should be able to make them pay with his legs. They play man coverage. DJ Lagway should be able to hit deep shots, you know, crossers, posts, you know, br- breaking things where you can have a guy like Aiden Mizell cut and just run. Things like that, Florida should be able to capitalize on. However, I'm going to get real selfish for a second here, okay? Elijah Badger, who transferred over this summer from Arizona State to Florida, is 222 yards away from being the first Florida Gators receiver to have 1,000 yards in a season since Taylor Jacobs in 2002. Badger's close. Like 222 yards, I know is a good bit, but you can eat up a lot of that in this, and then if you get Elijah Badger to play in the bowl game, you're there, right? Chalk it up there. And especially that's impressive considering the beginning of the season he was – a non-factor in, in the Miami game. And I, I feel like there there were stretches where he wasn't getting the football at all. Um, and so it's impressive that he's even that close to 1,000 yards right now. 
and that it's an, achie- that it's a, an achievable thing here. But you got to go vertical if, if you're Florida, right? Like you, you look at Florida State, what they've done this year, and they've allowed a lot of explosive plays in the passing game. Okay, And they've been admittedly good at, def- at limiting explosive plays in the rush game. Okay. But they allow more explosive plays total than Florida. And Florida's allowed explosive plays in both areas. But they've allowed more explosive plays in total than Florida and more passing plays than Florida. So, like, when we look at Florida's passing defense and we go, oh, they allow a lot of explosive plays, don't let a Florida State fan tell you that. Because Florida State allows more. I don't want to hear about any of that. Florida State is one of the worst defenses, one of the worst teams in all of FBS right now. They suck. And their secondary sucks. And their pass rush sucks. And if you're a Florida State fan watching this, you suck. And it's as simple as that. Florida needs to pour it on here. Like, go vertical, and they won't stop you. I'm telling, and I'm usually the kind of guy where I go, hey, like, you know, you could just run the ball in this game. You can, but rule of cool, go vertical, beat the crap out of them, run it up on them, and be able to have those bragging rights over your rival for, again, an entire season. They don't, they don't get to stop you again until next year. At least with, with Miami talking about Florida, they've got 10 months left. Florida, you beat Florida State here. You've got a year left. Run it up. Talk your trash. Let them hear it. And let DJ Lively put on a show, by the way. Like, that's another thing. When we talk about go vertical, do you know the recruiting momentum you can have in the portal if in the last game of the season, the most recent game they see, DJ Lively is just spinning it around the yard? Like, do you know, you're going to go after receivers in the portal, right? You're going to go after a lot of guys in the portal. Imagine being able to go, hey, look at DJ Lagway's last game that he had and then whatever he does in the bowl game. But until the bowl game, you can go look at DJ Lagway's last game against Florida State where he just aired it out against him. That's going to be your QB. That's him as a true freshman. That's going to be your QB next year. Imagine what he's going to be next year. Then then you're having a different conversation, right? Then, then you're like, all right, well, yeah, I do want to come play receiver for that. It doesn't matter if he just transferred in. Look at what Elijah Badger did when he just transferred in. Look what Chim DK did. Right? Like, you're going to have great selling points if you could finish this year strong. The year started horribly, and that's the reason you're not in the college football playoff. But if you can finish this season strong, you're going to really help yourself with recruiting and the transfer portal for 2025 where you can load up and try to make a run. There, we'll talk about the defensive side of the ball here when we get back with Locked On Gators. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and win $150 in bonus bets. If you win, the FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more. On the same page where you place your bets, just visit FanDuel.com to get started. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. It's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Thanks for making Lockdown Gators your first listen of the day. Every day, we are available daily and free wherever you listen to podcasts and on YouTube. And for Florida, on the flip side of things, defensively, the only thing I think you really need to do here is limit explosives. Play cover four. Just, just sit there. Play cover four. Play two man. Like limit explosives. Like Florida has been finding success playing this this bend don't break style of defense, right? Their blitz rates come down a little bit. Their cover four rate has climbed up significantly. They've been just playing. Hey, if you're going to take underneath, you're going to take underneath. We're going to make plays. But if you want to go vertical, we're going to make you earn it, right? Which I think the issue has been that sometimes teams have been earning it, even when they've gone vertical, even when you're playing cover four, right? I mean, Ole Miss had a couple deep shots that they hit on against Florida last week. Not enough to win the game, but they hit a couple of them. And for Florida, you're playing this bend-don't-break defense. That finally gives your time 
your pass rush time to get going, which we saw last year and the year prior were issues of, well, your pass rush can't get going because your coverage isn't there. And so quarterbacks are getting the ball out quickly and then people blame the pass rush. And really it's a combination of things. Like that's why earlier this week when I spoke with Brian Smith about this, I was like, for me, it's not that it's just one specific unit. Defensive line's playing really well. Corner's playing really well. It's not just one specific unit. It's that they're finally playing in sync as a unit, as just one full unit, the Florida Gators defense. They're finally playing like that. Keep doing that. Like Don't don't, don't fix what ain't broke, right? And so Luke Cromenhawk, if I'm pronouncing that name right, if I'm not, honestly, screw the Knowles, don't care. Uh, Luke Cromenhawk is inexperienced, likes throwing vertical. Okay. Play cover four. And if he wants to throw into coverage, let him throw into coverage. Honestly. Like, if, if he wants to go, hey, I'm going to... I'm looking for the deep ball. Let them. Look, teams have hit the deep ball against Florida before, right? Even when they are playing cover four. That's how, I think it was Trey Harris's touchdown was scored. One, one of the Ole Miss touchdowns was scored in cover four. Got inside of DD, behind Bryce Thornton. Um, so, yeah, you, you've given up those explosive plays. Will Florida State be able to hit those consistently? Will a true freshman be able, or will a freshman be able to hit those consistently? I don't know about that. Make him take the underneath stuff. Though. Like this is the thing that we talked about with DJ Lagway when he first got here. So like, yeah, his deep ball is amazing, but he needs to take that next step, which he did against Ole Miss. I was I was saying for a while he needs to take that next step, or or in order to get to that generational talk, he needs to take that next step of taking the underneath stuff. Beat them with your legs if you're going to beat them with your legs. But but take the underneath stuff that's there. Make Luke Cromenhawk either take the underneath stuff and beat you that way or choose to play Luke Cromenhawk football and be throwing into what should be contested coverage downfield. Go ahead. Young gunslingers, and, and I mean gunslingers, not just quarterbacks. I mean the guys that are looking for the deep ball. They don't usually make that adjustment quickly. They don't they, they don't usually go, okay, it's not there. I need to take what's underneath if we're gonna win. They usually, especially when they're when they haven't played much at the college football level, and when they dominated at the high school level throwing the deep ball, even like regardless of the coverage that teams played, a lot of times they go, I I can make these throws. I've made these throws before. You made them in high school, not college. Um, but young gun singers, they, they don't usually make that adjustment quickly. Hell, Patrick Mahomes took a couple seasons of teams playing too high before he even finally started doing that. Okay? Young gun singers don't make that adjustment quickly. See if he's going to. See if Luke Cromenhawk is going to take is going to take the underneath stuff if it's there. If you're playing quarters, he'll have stuff available. But see if he's going to. I don't think he would. I think he's going to take the deep shots still. And also, if he wants to take time and wait for a receiver to get open, just let your pass rush do their thing at that point, right? Like, like if, and I'm not trying to sound like Florida has this amazing pass rush. I think even when they've been playing really well, they've been playing pretty damn well lately, right? But they haven't been a consistent dominant force all season. So I'm not going to assume they've been, but they're hot right now. Let them stay hot. Florida State's offensive line sucks. Let them stay hot. If he wants to wait for a receiver to get open deep downfield, which might happen, probably won't, but might, let your pass rushers do their thing. Let your pass rushers just pin their ears back and get after the kid and ruin his day. Good luck recruiting in the portal there. That's your QB. Good luck. Let them happen. Just saying, there's this. This is one of the easiest how do you win strategies, or one of the easiest how do you win episodes we've done. Take deep shots, limit deep shots. You'll win the game. Simple as that. Like, yeah, you might not connect on every deep shot, obviously, but you take them. They'll be there. They always are against Florida State. They'll be there. Thanks for Locked On Gators, your first listen of the day every day. We are available daily and free. Reviews in the podcast and on YouTube. We'll be back tomorrow. 
after the game going live, and we will talk about the results of the game for Lockdown Gators. I'm Brandon Olson. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find all my written work with New York Giants on SI, and I'll see you all next time.